and welcome back to Franchise Nation. I am your host, Mulat Swami, along with Bengal, who will be here in a couple of minutes. He is just unloading some of his pack schedule uh, to make sure that he can do this entire show. But in the meantime, we are going to be doing just a little bit of Q&A because I don't particularly want to start the meat and potatoes of this podcast without him. Welcome back to the Cover 2 podcast. This is episode number five, and we have a very jam-packed show. Thursday Night Football is done for the season. Hallelujah. So, with that being said, we will be discussing in this episode, what is a catch? MVP race? The return of Aaron Rodgers. We're going to be talking about some of the other games that caught our eye. The XFL. And much, much more. So in the meantime, let us do a little bit of Q&A for the podcast. Um, I'll answer any questions that you may have to start things off. And as soon as Bengal returns, I'll give him his camera back. And we can begin doing the rest of our uh, coverage. So... Uh, what is, what's cover two? It is a defense that has two safeties high at the top of the alignment. Basically, you have a bunch of underneath defenders. You have five underneath defenders. You have uh, five. Yeah, five underneath defenders, four linemen, and then two deep safeties. So that's what cover two is. Um Let's see, any questions from you guys, or should we just, you know, start talking a little bit about the the show, the podcast, you know, just start things up a little bit. Um, some injury news, of course. Uh, Gray the Legs Erline is out for the season with a back injury. He has been the best kicker in football, potentially this season, uh, missing only two kicks along the way. He had the highest field goal percentage. Um, a lot of his kicks came from deep. He was just absolutely unreal this season. And it's it's terrible that he got hurt because of, yeah. What's going on, everybody? Okay, it looks like Bangal is back in the building. Let me give him his face back. Are you ready for your face? Yes, on? yes, yes. Okay, okay. Oh, oh. So, Did my audio in check this time? Yes, your audio is in check. You are rearing to go. Ready and raring. Yes, so um, I did answer one question quickly about what is cover two while you were gone. But outside of that... I have not discussed anything else except for our topics today, which are, of course, what is a catch, Aaron Rodgers' return, the MVP race, the XFL, and much, much more. So why don't we start off with Aaron Rodgers? Because that is the one that I think most people are going to be unhappy with and cry about. And so let's discuss what's going on there with Rodgers. Sure. <laughs> just uh, I was just admiring your centering job on the face cam. <laughs> While you were trying to center in as well? Yeah. Yeah, well, you know. So, well, why don't we start with that? All right, let's do it. Uh, uh, you're sad, aren't you? <laughs> I'll be honest. I, like, I heard what you said, but I didn't listen to it. Uh, I have well, no idea what you said. I okay. No Aaron Rodgers. Yes. Okay. Discuss him. What um, happened? What happened well, to your man? Obviously, I was correct in my prediction that the Panthers would come out and get the win against Aaron Rodgers. It's his first week back against uh, one of the better teams in the NFL, obviously. Yeah. And, you know, he struggled, get the rust. He's definitely not at 100%. I think it was a mistake for the Packers to get him back. I know you have a shot at the playoffs and you know you want to put yourself in that position to be able to make the playoffs and succeed but yeah. i think at some point you just have to cut your losses and say all right we failed this season might as well just take the higher draft pick you know even if it's three or four spots whatever it means we'll take the losses and we'll go into it next year with a better group of players around our starting quarterback aaron Rodgers, who we want at you know full potential so 
Absolutely. Good thing Packers put him back on IR uh, or on IR. I don't, you know, I'm not sure he should have played at all yeah. last week. It, you know, unfortunate you could... performance, but I mean, why bother at that point? Yeah. You have an outside shot to make the playoffs. Yeah. You're going to play your franchise quarterback and potentially, you know, end his career. I know that sounds extreme, but that's a legitimate thing that could have happened. Yeah. I mean, well, as well as with Tony Bowman, Romo. Snap again. Now you have him out for more. It's weaker. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, you saw what happened with Romo. I mean, yeah. obviously, different situation being his back. But people thought he was healed and they were more conservative with Romo mm. coming into that point. Rodgers was like, yeah, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready, everybody. And then you could tell that it just, it was not, he was not himself. Um, one of the things that we discussed last week was the mechanics of Aaron Rodgers that for those aspiring young quarterbacks, you don't want to study to be Aaron Rodgers. You want to study to be Brady because you want those consistent mechanics. With those inconsistent mechanics and those unconventional throwing platforms that he uses, he has to be at 100%. And you mm-hmm. could tell he was under-throwing for probably the first time in his professional career consistently because he doesn't use his full body enough in his throws. It was all arm, and it was the arm that was obviously not 100%. So um, I was rooting for him. I really was. I yeah, wanted I, to see I the, Rogers. I I so to see the comeback. But... Um, he really shouldn't have been playing, and I'm glad that they had the common sense to put him on IR. Obviously, there's nothing left for him to play for this year, mm-hmm. but that was just an unfortunate circumstance. Uh, Carolina Panthers, though, they look great. Um, yeah, I mean, Aaron Rodgers, even at not 100%, he still had a lot of moments in that game that just said, wow, we really yeah. missed him. And you can tell the level, the gap between him and Brett Hundley, even if he was, say, 50%, was was unreal. I mean, he was making throws. He was doing things that Hundley couldn't even dream of. And that that's the gap between the best in the world or one of the top two guys in the world and someone who is not. Backup. Perennial backup. E- even a guy like, uh, I mean, you don't see guys like in the mid-tiers. You don't see Jameis Winston or Mariota or these guys doing anything close to what Rodgers or Brady can do in some of these circumstances. So it's like, I really don't think you see anyone. It's, it's what really yeah. makes up that elite tier. Cause yeah. people want to talk elite and they want to talk, you know, like 10 guys in elite elite isn't 10 <laughs> elites. The, like the three best. Yeah. Maybe a fourth depending uh, I, on the position. Of course, yeah. quarterback, I'm three to four cornerback. You're talking maybe, maybe 10 elite yeah. guys. Yeah. Um, um, I think that's still a little high. I'd say maybe five for corner two for quarterback right now. I think it's just Brady and Rodgers. I don't think anyone else is even close to them at the yeah. moment. But um, that's that's a debate for another day. Um, regardless, the Packers have now fallen 7-7. Their season is effectively over. Um, they'll be taking on the Vikings this week. We'll get to that later. The Carolina Panthers, on the other hand, are 10-4. and And they are tied with the New Orleans Saints in the record column. But I believe the Saints swept them head-to-head. So they would need to finish with a better record than them to win the division. The Saints host the 9-5 Atlanta Falcons this week, which is going to be a crazy game. But uh, what other games caught your eye from this past week? Um, I As think a there, Giants it, fan, Giants game certainly surprised me for a portion of it. Uh, I didn't really think it would be particularly close given you know all the injuries that the Giants have. But you had guys like Tavares King, two touchdowns for him, and one of them was a great play by him at yeah. least. He was shredding them. Yeah, I mean, he's a bigger guy, and he's got some quickness. Yeah, but I mean, it's still, this Eagles defense was supposed to be great. But then again, we can always go back to never judge road divisional teams in divisional games. It just It's not a good idea because you see it happen every single time. They're all trap games. Yeah, I've certainly spoken about it over the course of the year. I think the Eagles are one of the most overrated teams we've seen over the past five years at least. Uh, I don't think they're anywhere close to the best team in the league um, or anywhere close to any of the teams we've seen with similar records over the past couple of years. I think they're very similar to the Panthers uh, of, you know, their 15 and one season or 14 and two, whatever they ended up going. Yeah. So I think the Eagles are over but the thing that really stood out to me uh, that I really started to take note of in that giants Eagles game was you take a look at Patrick Robinson, a cornerback who's, you know, kind of been okay for his entire career, nothing special. And yeah. then he's had his moments, but yeah, this year 
he's played at an elite level. That's a fact. Whether he's an elite player or not, he's played at an elite level. Yeah. Right. And then you have Sterling Shepard, a second year receiver out of Oklahoma, uh, who torched him on several occasions. <laughs> Man, Shepard is one of my favorite players from that draft period. He was awesome at Oklahoma. Very yeah. underrated uh, guy that could play in the slot and on the outside. He's like, he's, you know, he's, he's got more a of a pure slot, but excuse me he's more of a pure slot in the nfl oh, in, my opinion, in the nfl but... absolutely yeah. uh he has what i think it's top five most slot yards in the nfl since entering yeah which is, i think incredibly cool as a giants fan but i, I see some talk about being bi- being biased in the chat i think i am one of the most unbiased fans you're ever gonna find so I, I mean i can attest to that he bashes the giants repeatedly most of the time so i mean he's pretty fair in his criticisms one way or the other but that's not too important at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, just looking at slot yards this year, he is fourth in slot yardage uh, behind Golden Tate, Larry Fitzgerald, and Nelson Aguilar. Nelson Aguilar's had a very good season. Yes. He's he also lined a, up a lot in the slot, 83%. He made a play over Ross Cockrell, and not that Ross Cockrell's any <laughs> good, but yeah. uh, great play to go up and get the football. Mossed him almost, you could say. Jumped over him, made a nice play. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, Aguilar's had a breakout season, considering his first two years in the league were pretty lackluster. Um, I'm, I'm happy to see him elevate himself. I mean, he's, I don't know if he's the first round pick that people expected, but he's getting close. I mean, he's, he's absolutely a very good number two right now. He could become more, but either way. That was an interesting game. Um, the game that caught my eye before we get to the uh, the big two games, being the Oakland Cowboys game and the Patriots Steelers game, was that 49ers Titans game. My son Jimmy Garoppolo doing it again, five and zero as a starter, two Super Bowl rings, elite level quarterbacking right there. First quarterback to win their first five career starts since Ben Roethlisberger did it in 2004 on one of the more stacked Steelers teams in recent memory. And, Gar- and he turned a 1-10 in in team! Let's keep in mind, at the time of Jimmy Garoppolo taking over the 49ers, they had tied for the second, or it might have been third worst record in the NFL. They were 1-10. in 10. So, well, I mean, at his time of his first start, well, they were one in ten at the time of his first start. Were they really? I thought they had, yeah. had two wins at that point. Nope. No, I guess you're right. The yeah. only win was against the Giants. Yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean that really shows what a good quarterback can do for you. I mean, he's no C.J. Beathard, but he's putting in a few good shifts for the Niners. Man, I it's the level. It begins of to play. make you think. Not to cut you off again, but did the Patriots get swindled? You know, is Jimmy Garoppolo worth far more than a second round pick? It appears oh, yeah, to easily, be. easily, easily. You know, there was some debate about it. Matt Miller had an interesting theory that um, Bill Belichick wanted to trade Brady and keep Garoppolo. Kraft found out, said absolutely not. So <laughs> then they let Garoppolo pick his destination. And Shanahan runs the exact same schematic offense as McDaniels does. Plus, he was on the scout team in the Super Bowl last year, so he has some familiarities with his plays. So they said, okay, Jimmy, we're going to send you there. We're not letting you go to Cleveland because they're terrible. We don't want to put you in that. And that was the theory that Matt Miller had. I personally think that because people had the question marks of whether he was just another Brady backup and because he – before. Yep, and because of the fact that he was only under control for half a season at the current salary – I think those were the two big reasons that he didn't get more, that they didn't get more out of him. But he was absolutely worth more. Um, Anyone who watched him play on the Patriots, who knew that team and knew the way that he played, he had all the traits that you would want to see in a young quarterback. He had the release, he had the accuracy, he had the arm strength, he had the poise, he had the footwork, he had the processing, all of it. And the people were just thinking, okay, well, maybe it's just schematics that he just... You know, he's been there a long time that it's the talent around him. But no, I mean, he's doing this with a 1-10 in 10 team with his number one weapon being Marquise Goodwin. Hug him horns. I mean, Goodwin's fantastic as a speed guy, but he's, he's been more reliable. Fun. George Kittle's been good for him. 
Uh, Taylor has been excellent out of the slot Taylor for them. Great, yeah. So, attack. yeah, so, I mean, they have pieces in place, plus they're going to get Garcon back, plus they're going to have a top 10 pick that they can use, because now it's not a top 5 pick anymore <laughs> because of Jimmy G. But the knowledge yeah, that you'd he like has... You'd like to see it, I think, even if you're the 49ers. Like, it sucks yeah. that you're not going to have a, a great draft pick, as you maybe would have, but yeah. this is what you wanted. This is what you want to see. And, yeah. you know speculation you know you can say what you want about it but we're a podcast we're going to let's yeah. speculate for a moment <laughs> jimmy garoppolo what does his offseason look like he is getting a five-year 125 million dollar deal from the 49ers book it does he accept it yes i think he stays with kyle shanahan and i think, I makes think sense too. and i think in six years time if brady has retired and Belichick is still there. You're about to make an asinine statement. Garoppolo might go back to the Patriots. Absolutely asinine. <laughs> now, I don't know if that'll happen, but that would be pretty interesting. That would be interesting. It would be the ultimate level of collusion, where it's like, we'll give you the best opportunity, get your money, and then as soon as Brady's gone, come back. <laughs> ultimate they, level they of collusion. Sign a clause. Yeah, in his contract. <laughs> yeah. Go back to New England. Yes, exactly. Or they have to give them the next five first round picks. <laughs> Something like that. But no, I, I just, I do think that he's going to sign long term with the 49ers. I don't Let think. Let me there's... ask you a question, just because you, you said five first round picks. Yeah. I'm like, that's interesting. What is the most amount of picks you'd give up for the best quarterback in the league? Let's, let's say, for example, it's Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, but let's say they're in their prime. Let's say it's not now. Let's say Tom Brady's not 40. Aaron Rodgers isn't 33 or 34 or what, 32, whatever he is. Let, let's say they're both 27, that age, going okay. into their prime. What is the highest number of first-round picks you'd give up over the years? Um, I have so my number in my head. You do yours first. I want to formulate my, my full tally on it. I think I would do – and, you know – Keep in mind the value that first round picks have and the way that certain teams with successful first round draft picks have been able to build teams. Yeah. Um, and I think my number would have to be three. I know that seems like potentially small or large, depending on your uh, view of it. But I think three first round draft picks, we could say that's a like what, three years? And I might even go as high as four, but I would doubt it. But I mean, you're looking at the best quarterback in the NFL. So, I mean, you could go up to four. But uh, that's that's a lot of first round picks, and I feel like is that almost giving up your future? And like, what you maybe you don't have talent to build around that player. It's an interesting situation, like with yeah. the, with the Colts have with their Andrew Luck situation. And it's different because they do have picks, yeah. but they gave Andrew Luck a max deal, and suddenly they haven't had good draft classes and have no money to sign free agents to put talent around him. Yeah. So they've given away their future. The Colts, yes. are awful. And yep. Andrew Luck now has so many health concerns. That team might be worse than the Browns, despite having a better record. I know that seems like a ridiculous statement. No, they are. They're, they're a worse team. But they're terrible. They really and they are. have some bright spots. Malik Hooker, obviously injured. But, out yeah, he's hurt. So um, Henry Anderson. Yeah, I know. Um, I mean, they, they have some pieces, but okay. So Not really, though. No, they no, they don't have a ton. But here's what I would say. Dante Davis. Yeah. You don't really have any corners or linebackers. Or... They have Sheard, who's played very well. Yeah, they did sign him. They ha um, Hankins has been very good on the interior as well. I know you. I know he was a giant. I don't know if you were high on him. I thought I, I pretty much liked Jonathan Hankins, but I thought he had never rolled once they signed Harrison. Um, yeah. Well, see, Hankins was supposed to be um, like the pass rusher. But he never well, was. It just it, – yeah, His, never his pass rush skills never really developed. Eh? Like, yeah. Hankins was drafted to be a pass rusher before they had Damon Harrison. Yeah. But he never developed the pass rush skills that he maybe showcased a bit of Ohio State. Yeah. And then he turned into a nose. Yeah. And then they decided to sign a nose tackle. Which I think that was a smart move yeah. to sign Damon Harrison. Well, I mean, if you have the chance of the best nose tackle in football, yeah. maybe oh. ever, like, that, that, you do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, statistically, people want to tell me, I, I, I said on Twitter the other day that Damon Harrison is the best nose tackle in football and he'll never make a Pro Bowl. Something along those He'll, lines. He won't even make the Hall of Fame, and he might be yeah. the best at the position. We, we were talking about that, too. Yeah. And then someone's like, and I said it in a video as well, and I had people in my uh, in my comment section, in my mentions, just absolutely ridiculous statements. Like, 
Linval Joseph question mark? And oh, I'm like, oh, no. Absolutely yeah. not Linval Joseph. Linval Joseph is a good player. He knows. He's a very good player, but he's not a nose yeah. tackle. Yeah, yeah, like, I mean, he, all, he sometimes is. It depends on what Floyd's doing. but He's not better than Damon Harrison. No, there's no one as a run stopper who is better than uh, Snacks Harrison. Yeah. And, and Harrison has even developed some pass rush. So, I yeah. mean, like, he's... he's, he's, he's I he's, made one or two sacks max on the season, but still. Yeah, but, I mean, he still can generate some pressure, which is His the whole thing is get in the way. And, like... Yeah. Like, I would say casuals is a fun word I like to throw out there that makes people mad. Casuals don't understand how important a nose tackle is. They're like, oh, well, you want sacks and tackles for loss. It's like, well, how do you get that? It starts yeah. with a good nose tackle. Look at Alden Smith and look at Justin Smith. Justin Smith. Oh, my God. He Justin so Smith. Good. He wasn't a nose tackle, obviously. No, he, he, was, a, he was a three He was a three, four end. His whole deal was hold blocks so you get more one-on-one -on -one situations for yeah. Alden Smith. And Alden Smith has, like, what, 17 sacks in one year? Yeah. And Justin Smith is just... As, as a rotational pass lines. rusher. Yeah. As a rotational guy. But look at uh, look at the Browns' run defense, Danny Shelton. Danny how, Shelton. How he's transformed them. Those. And then you have him with Ogan Ogan Joby, who's a great partner to him. Yep. Pair you those guys on the interior. A lot of exciting stuff. Like, I love the Browns. And I think yeah. I would call myself a reverse bandwagon in a lot of senses. Because like I don't really care for quarterbacks. I'm a huge defense guy. Yeah. I love. I'll I'm, take I'm, so, I'm stunned. You're a defense down. guy. I'll, well, yeah, you obviously not. I'll, I'll take a sack over a first down. You get my point. Yes. Um, but it's like I love the Jaguars because they've sucked. I love the Browns because they've sucked, and they yeah. do. They continue to suck. And now you love the Giants. Moving so, on. Wait. So I didn't tell you my answer. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm first going to picks. say, I'm going to say either three first round picks. Or two first round picks and three second round picks. Mm. So either five picks total or three first rounders. Because think about it like this you trade for that guy. The first pick will be a higher end one, most likely, because you don't have a quarterback. The rest of them will be tw mid 20s to 30s for that first rounder. The second mm. rounders will be in the 60s. So. You need to hit your mid-round picks no matter what if you're going to build around a quarterback like that. So if you take out the first two to guarantee you get that quarterback, that's how I think it would have to play out. But most I would do is three first-rounders and five total picks would be my max if you do two first and three seconds. Yeah, when we were talking about first-round picks, I agreed. we agree on the three. Yeah. Um, but then I, I probably would agree with you as well in terms of total picks because – Here's what you need when you have a quarterback of a level of Brady or Rodgers. Yeah. You put your focus on the defensive side of the football. Because look at Tom Brady, look at Aaron Rodgers, look at their weapons they've utilized over the years. Tom look Brady, Peyton Manning. White, and Wes Welker. I don't think Wes Welker was anything special, but he was a good route runner and he held on to the football. Sometimes. And Tom Brady could find an open guy. And Aaron Rodgers can throw to Greg Jennings and can throw to James Jones and, you know, guys like that. Jordy Nelson's an incredible player, but you know, we're on the same page here. Yeah. You know, you don't need, or you do need them. You, you need quality offensive linemen and receivers. Yeah. You, and need a de you need one dependable important. guy, yeah. one dependable guy. You see what Brady has done with Welker alone, with Edelman alone. You add guys like Gronkowski and company. Yes, it makes it better. But then you see the alternative approaches where, the Packers put all their money into their O-line, put it into their receivers, put it into Rodgers, completely forgot about their defense. What is it And it's done? like they didn't even need to do that yep. because Aaron Rodgers was making, you know, bad players look good for a while. Yep. Like Jeff Janis had some spots for like, is Jeff Janis going to be good? And it's like, no, it's Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> yes, it's Aaron Rodgers throwing to him. But look, even look at Peyton Manning. That, yeah. Peyton it, Manning in his prime. Oh it, my is, God. it has irritated me forever because – the Colts put every egg into their offensive basket. Wayne, Harrison, um, whether it be Collie, whether it be Edrin. Yeah, I mean. Rhodes. Um, yeah, and then you have obviously Jeff Saturday and the offensive line and all of those pieces. And it's like, oh yeah, Peyton Manning is so great. Well, you gave him everything he needs to be great, but he's not winning games because he doesn't have a defense. Mm. And then they're like, well, he's five MVPs. Well, yeah. You stacked his offense for him to pad stats, not win games. Yes, they won a lot of regular season games and a terrible division. Yes, there were some bright spots along the way. But, I mean, you don't win championships like that. 
And it's they, part they of the did reason. have some defenses, to be fair. Like they, well, yes, Bob Brandon Sanders injuries. Uh, I was, I don't know why the first name that popped in my head was Gary Brackett when you have Dwight Freeney, Bob and Robert Sanders. Mathis. There were a number of good players yeah. on those yes. defenses, but there weren't enough. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, to come to think of it, if you think about how Peyton played in his four Super Bowl appearances, he was terrible in three of them. Mm. And he won two of those. His best performance was against the Saints, in my opinion. I thought he was terrible against the Bears. I thought he was awful against the Seahawks. And I thought he was even worse against the Panthers. His Panthers Super Bowl was something else. Yeah. So I mean, so bad. So, I mean, defense is important. And so giving up too much for a first round, for a quarterback, is going to cripple you. I mean, look what Ditka did with Ricky Williams. That was the epitome of stupid. And, and, the horns. I mean, in general. I mean, Ricky Williams, love him. Excellent running back, but he traded the whole draft. <laughs> yeah. Um, the thing about great running backs is no matter how great the player is, you still need an offensive line. And, you yeah. you know, a passing game is still necessary. It's yes. not like it is with a quarterback and wide receivers. Elite running backs do not play at an elite level without good pieces around them. That's exactly. a fact. Yep. There are Absolutely. some that, that have played well but not to the elite level that you need them to be. And when you mortgage, you know, your house in order to get a player, yeah. you have not, you can't don't have any money to do anything else with, or you don't have picks. You can't get these good players that make these players play well. Yeah. So in right now going back to Garoppolo, they might've gotten that guy for a second round pick. Yeah. Incredible. <laughs> I mean, he still has to resign, but yeah, I think he will. Okay. I, mean, I, I don't like grading people with limited starts. Mm. Where do you rank Garoppolo right now in the NFL? Not not just this season, like among quarterbacks. Where do you put him? Purely subjectively with, with not with no well, okay, what do you want me to do? Because we could do just this season. Uh just rank him overall. Like Okay, in general. Yeah. He's like, um yeah. he's top fifteen for me. I think a good spot for him without considering other variables is probably eight. Eight? I think eight. Wow. Um, I'm not that bold to put him that high. I think he, I think he's just done so much with so little and yeah. you look, that's one of the worst offensive lines in football. Yes. And he's been pressured a tremendous amount this season. I don't think there are a number of high quality quarterbacks in the NFL. So eight seems really, really high, but I'm also taking potential and it, it's so few games where maybe 15 does sound like a better number, but I yeah. think I think eight is good in terms of general ability and talent and winning football games. And when you win five straight with the second worst team in the NFL, that's saying so. Well, he won three straight. Yeah, well, five undefeated as a starter, whatever it was. But he has been still. he has been pressured thirty six point eight percent of his dropbacks so far this season. He is sixty five point eight percent completion in that regard and seventy five percent accuracy percentage. Where that does that regard. rank in terms of uh, other quarterbacks across the league? Thirty eight. Uh, that would put him as the fourth most pressured quarterback in the NFL. Um, if I remove uh, anyone with over fifty percent of dropbacks for the team, so okay. obviously he has a much smaller sample size. But only Jacoby Brissett, Russell Wilson, and Case Keenum have been pressured more than. Jimmy Garoppolo relative to sample size. Where do his percentages rank in terms of like completion percentage and accuracy? Oh, um, completion percentage under pressure would be highest. Accuracy percentage under pressure would be highest. So highest. I uh, see. That's why like I'm accounting potential. Uh, granted it is way too early to put eight on him as the eighth yep. best quarterback, in the NFL, but I'm taking into account everything he's done. And the yep. fact that if he continues to play at this level, eight is even too low yeah i mean he could he has all of the skills based on what we've seen to be one of the best quarterbacks in the nfl but i'm gonna say right now because i don't overextend in these types of situations i'm gonna put him at 15 yeah 15th best quarterback right now ahead of wentz ahead of prescott ahead of all of those guys i think where i went initially because i mean if you compare just head to head between Wentz and Garoppolo, obviously it's different because Garoppolo's been in the league for years, so he's had the experience factor. But his mechanics are better, his accuracy is better, his uh, his processing is a lot faster, his decision making is better. His arm might not be as good, but it's still really good. He has a better release, he has a better feel for pressure. 
there's just not a category outside of arm strength that Wentz has an edge on him for. And you can tell he has all of the intangibles already. It's, it's so clear as day. The fact that the entire Patriots locker room completely cheered for him the second that he won his first game after trading him. It says a lot about him as a player and a guy. It says so much. Plus the fact that you hear him mic'd up and how much he does from everybody. It's, it's something he, else. He, he's a special talent. Um, but let's talk a little bit about the fumble at the end of the Oakland Raiders game quickly. And then we'll uh, go Derek on to Carr's my... got to know better. He does. Do you... Okay, the rule. So first off, ball doesn't lie. He threw what should have been a game-ending interception three plays earlier. Then he got away with the worst thing that happens in football ever. An underthrown deep ball that is called DPI because the wide receiver doesn't make any effort for the ball and just runs into the corner. Then he does that. So if you were on the rules committee... Are you okay with that fumble rule being a touchback? Uh, yeah, I have to be. Well, I want to pose this question. Would you be okay with it where the down counts, but you get the ball on their 20-yard line? So it would be a reverse touchback. So you don't lose possession, but the down counts, and you get pushed back off the goal line. Uh, or is that not a big enough punishment for losing the football? Because anywhere else on the field, if you lose I the ball out of bounds, bounds, you keep possession at the yes. spot of the fumble. Yes, which uh, would be ridiculous in the goal line, obviously. I'm not necessarily in favor of changing rules, especially the, to that degree. Okay. Um, and yeah, it does seem extreme. Ball goes out of the end zone. You completely lose possession. But I think, you know, you got to be so careful with the football in those situations and near the goal line. Yeah. And if you're going to be fumbling into or out of the end zone, I see, I see no problem with the current role, even if people also do. Okay. I mean, I just wanted to pose it. I thought it was a very interesting thing. I think it's okay the way it is, but I know a lot of people wish it was something different because yeah, like if you fumble it anywhere else, it's not, but I agree. It, you should be punished if you do that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, Carr had to know better. First off, he put it into his left hand with a weak grip on it anyway. And he look, he turned the game over in field goal range down three points. You can't. You can't no. do it. By the way, what Drew Brees and Ben Roethlisberger did in the past two weeks is they threw a game-losing interception in the red zone inside two minutes left with the game either tied or within three points of them trailing it is only the 11th time that has happened in nfl history since 1994 since it started being tracked Mm -hmm. it is the those the it it hadn't happened since 2014 so if you consider fumbles obviously Derek carr would go into that category as well but now we get to talk about the game that i enjoyed we get to talk about the game that i enjoyed patriots Steelers. How about you start this one off? I'll be right back. <laughs> um, all right. So, as far as picks go, Swami took the Patriots. I took the Steelers at home. And it looked as if the Steelers were going to come out here and get the win at home. They were ahead. And then, obviously, I mean, we, we all saw the game. And if, if you didn't... Um, there were a number of controversial things that happened at the end of the football game revolving around one particular Pittsburgh tight end. Yep. And Jesse James. <laughs> oh my goodness. You see it? <laughs> you know, what constitutes a catch? And <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you just can't help but laugh, right? Uh, Jesse James <laughs> caught the ball, reached out for the goal line, and bobbled the ball on the ground after stretching over the plane. Yes. Now, <laughs> uh, to some degree, there you got to follow through with the rule, maintaining possession through the catch. I remember with the fumbling, you guys should know. You know, you got to make a football move. Yep. Having getting the ball, catching it, reaching over the goal line, stretching over the goal line, 
that's a football move. That's a catch. That's a touchdown. Incomplete. So I'm going to counter it by saying this. Ridiculous that you're doing this, by the way. (laughs) Absolutely ridiculous. You love it. You absolutely love it. For those of you who are listening, I put on my vintage throwback Darrell Revis jersey from the Patriots, and I'm wearing my Super Bowl uh, Bowl 51 hat, which, yeah. But um, basically, he caught the ball, got it in his hands, and while he was turning to go to the ground, because he didn't catch it standing up and then dive, he was kind of... He kind of went and leaned and turned horizontally towards the, or not horizontally, diagonally towards the end zone. So because he didn't establish his feet in while he was maintained upright, that's why it was not considered a catch. If he had done that because the fact that he did not actually secure his feet first, they consider the act of him catching and going to the ground as one motion, which is why it was ruled an incomplete pass. If he had caught it and then dove, it's different because the catch has to be secured through going to the ground. If I understand you go, the rule. So, I think the yeah, rule is bullshit. I think the rule is terrible. I think it's awful. It's better than the old rule where if you had the ball in your possession for even a split second when you crossed the goal line, it was a touchdown. Mm. Um, someone linked me a video of it. Was it you who sent me that video? It absolutely was not. It was from Super Bowl twelve. I'm going to come out here with an OCU Minura jersey next. (laughs) Guy threw a deep ball. Justin Tuck. (laughs) He threw a deep ball, and the guy literally put his hands out, caught it for a second, crossed the end zone, and dropped it, and they ruled it a touchdown. Yeah. He didn't even get both feet in. Like, he didn't even get, he didn't even take two steps. He just had it and dropped it, but because he had it when he crossed the goal line. So this rule is better than that, but this rule sucks. Because for all intents and purposes... That was a catch, and it should have been a catch. Per the rules, it wasn't, and it sucks for the Steelers, but they need to know better. Jesse James had no business trying to do that. It would have been first and goal from the one with 40 seconds left. That's fair. I'm, you know, it just there are a number of rules that I think are bad in the NFL. Yeah. I think a number of people would agree with that. We could talk about hits over the middle of the field and defenseless receivers and yeah and pass interference yes. and um, batting a fumble out of bounds. You know that yes. one? Yes. If you choose to bat a ball intentionally out of bounds, which is, again, an extremely subjective call by the referee to determine whether he, that it was intentional or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but you, you can usually tell. get it and you get it on the fingertips and it goes out of bounds and the referee says, yeah, that's, you know – a, you know a penalty you can't do that and you were really trying to catch the ball i mean i think that's stupid yeah uh there are a number of rules won't get into all of them that are yeah. bad can't defensive all pass interference them. and intentional grounding are my two least favorite rules in football the fact that they never call that shit ever intentional grounding happens so much it is awful and then defensive pass interference the way that they rule that is just atrocious I mean, there are times, there was a play, um, I don't know which game it was. A guy threw, I think it might have been the Eagles game. Was it against the Rams, the Eagles-Rams game, where a guy threw the ball and it wasn't even in the frame? It was so far out of play and they ruled defensive pass interference? I I mean, it has to be catchable. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you tackle the son of a gun. (laughs) If it's not catchable, it's not catchable. I mean, it's just... I hate that ruling. I think the competition committee has its work cut out for them, but there's some stuff in there that is just terrible. Just awful. So, that's it for my rant on that. Go Patriots! If they win the next two weeks, they secure home field advantage throughout the uh, postseason, which is obviously more important than anything else about that game. Um, Ben Roethlisberger, he has a bus prepared for every single one of his teammates, co-workers, coaches, all of it, just to push them in front of whenever thing gets difficult. Um, I mean, literally, that guy blames everybody but himself. It is awful. But On um, another note, I can already see my comment section regarding <laughs> this whole, uh, whole setup you got here. 
Yeah, well, it's gonna be it's gonna be very interesting. Oh god, I don't even know if I should read it this week. My, my comment section is ridiculous. They, like, you guys gotta chill a little bit. <laughs> Honestly, I don't. I just I just want debate in that comments. You know, there's not even. There's just there's just hate. I know. Man. I want debate. I embrace it. <laughs> it's it's funny though. I feel like when you get notifications from my video, sometimes I'll get a uh, I'll get a comment at that one, one minute ago, and I'll see Swami already typed out a paragraph response like forty five seconds ago. I'm like, you typed that in twelve seconds. You typed a paragraph response to this guy. How did I mean, you respond to this so quickly? Because I used Roller Typer. Yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> uh, but shout out to the child. For my particular viewers, there's a way to go about things. Again, Swami likes to debate, but when you're just straight up attacking guys, it's not it's not acceptable. Yeah, I, as long as we have reason responses in general, I'm happy. Um, but I will say, from that Steelers game, Steelers should feel pretty damn good about themselves outside of the result because they should have won that game without yeah. Antonio Brown. They dominated that game overall. While they couldn't stop Gronkowski for the life of them, I mean, he had 169 yards on the game, and he had 69 yards on the game-winning possession as well. Brady was immaculate. Gronkowski was immaculate. The Patriots' defense couldn't tackle worth a damn. And the play calling was great. They controlled time of possession. They controlled that game. So if I'm Pittsburgh, I feel good, but I don't feel good enough because now you're going to have to go to New England if you face them in the playoffs. Mm. So... This was your shot. And you blew it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's unfortunate for the Steelers. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, I said uh, I said on Twitter today that I'm rooting for the Steelers to win the Super Bowl because I have a YouTube pal, Six Rings of Steel. You know, oh, I, I love Matt, yeah. And I'm, I'm very much hoping that his name is now obsolete if the Steelers win another one. Oh, God. Well, that's a pretty terrible reason. <laughs> Joke, I know. Should we move on to a Q&A session? Um, or do you want to touch on anything else first? I want to do MVPs. I want to oh, talk yeah. about the MVP race. I, I don't know if I'll have enough time for Q&A. We can probably do a little bit, but um, because then we do have the games to go over. We'll do MVPs oh, quickly. True. Yeah, we might not have time. Let's do the games uh, after. We'll do like a five-minute Q&A. Let's just do the MVP race real quick. Okay. Give me your top five. Top five? Um, Brady... Wilson, Gurley, uh, I, I'm Wentz. I guess. Okay. I don't. I don't like that. No, uh, it it doesn't feel great. But his numbers are undeniable. Yeah. Um, and a fifth. Okay, I mean, you can get back know. to that. But uh, for me, it's Brady by a mile right now. Mm. Wilson number two. Antonio Brown, number three, despite the injury. 1,500 yards this season, nine touchdowns. I mean, he carried Roethlisberger for a large portion of the season. And I think he's one of the main factors in that Steelers' success this year. Well, their defense has definitely been better. Um, number four, Alvin Kamara. Yeah, he could be my fifth. I think Gurley is, is up there, though, for sure. Gurley's my sixth. Wentz is my fifth. Only reason that I have Kamara over Gurley is two main reasons. Kamara is averaging over two yards per touch more than Gurley and over two yards per carry more than Todd Gurley this season. So it's... What if, what if Mark Ingram was on the Rams? If Mark Ingram was on the Rams, then Gurley wouldn't have all those yards. But Maybe both of them, both of them... Yeah. It's just, that's banter. But Kamara and Gurley both have over 50 receptions this season. So they're both doing things in at least a similar way. They both have very good offensive coaches who are giving them an opportunity to get into space and make things happen. I think Gurley's been excellent. I think he is the sole reason on that offense that the Rams have been good this year because I don't think it's been golf. I think McVay and Gurley together have been excellent. Okay, Whitworth. Whitworth, too. But um, I, I can't even consider uh, Jared Goff as an MVP candidate. It's just he's not good enough. And Wentz... He might be the best in the league. <laughs> Wentz was a hard sell for me. Uh, seven was Marshawn Lattimore. Eight was Calais Campbell. Nine is Matt Ryan. Ten is Phillip Rivers. Matt Ryan. Okay. I think he's been really good this year. Um, that game against the Saints was not. But coming into that game, he had the by far the lowest turnover-worthy uh, throw percent in the NFL and would have broken NFL records from pro football focus. Um 
for the season if he had kept up that pace. But he had eight interceptions, and only, I think, two of those were legitimate. So, I mean, he had awful luck. He's had no help at wide receiver outside of Julio. I think those guys are really talented, but the play calling plus the fact that they've been letting him down in terms of drops much more than last season. I think last year was an overall excellent, was a, a, a real MVP season, but in a year where everybody is kind of eh after Brady, I'd like to consider Matt Ryan there, especially because they're 9-5 and five at the moment. Um, yeah. I think uh, maybe as a dark horse candidate, candidate you uh, throw in Ray Childress. Ray Childress, huh? Yeah. <sighs> That's a name to look up if you don't know. Yeah, well, Case Keenum could have a claim, but he's in the same boat as golf. You know, it's kind of like the team is propelling them. Even though he's played well. He's played well beyond his actual capabilities. I'm going to look up Ray Childress while you talk now. <laughs> He was a, uh, you know, Houston Oilers defensive lineman for like a decade in the league. Oh, and wow. uh, top five pick in the draft in 1985, something like that. Yep. College Football Hall of Fame. You Dark know, Horse MVP candidate right there. You, you know, when you said Childress, I got thrown off by Brad, Brad. Childress and thinking that he was the offensive coordinator for the Vikings. And I said, no, that's not possible. That's Pat Shermer. And then I said, wait, he was a defensive guy anyway. <laughs> so there were a lot of things going through my mind that I kind of froze up on. But um, either way, look at you name dropping. I should have said uh, Chris Dolman. Okay, you need to stop, Kevin O'Brien. Um, either uh, way. Or right, Jan Stenerud. <laughs> Okay, let's do some Q&A real quick, and then we'll get into our picks for the week. Uh, I'm picking... I, I'm I picking said... Garo Yepremian to win it all. Who? Garo Yepremian. Gotcha. Come on, you, you know Garo. Come on. <laughs> don't act like you don't. You're awful. You're awful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, no, we're not doing anything for uh, prospects this week. We didn't have enough time, and we had a lot of stuff to cover with uh, some really big topics this week with Rodgers and the, the Steelers game and all that. But uh, uh, let's talk one more game, or let's talk uh, some playoff push wall. They are filtering in questions. Um, Tennessee Titans, are they going to make the playoffs? Uh, they're terrible, so I hope not. Well, it looks like it's going to be them, the Bills, or the Chargers. Give me and, the Chargers. Easy. Well, the problem is the Chargers are... Just lost the Chiefs. They're 7-7. Seven and seven. Yeah. So they need to win out. The Titans, I don't think they're going to. The Bills are terrible. The Ravens are another option. The Ravens might be the best of the bunch, and I can't believe I'm saying that. Ravens versus Chiefs. Titans versus Jaguars. Those could be interesting games. I think the Jags win, and I think the Ravens stun and beat the Chiefs. Yeah, I don't think the Chiefs are all that good, especially yeah. defensively um, in, the, uh, in the secondary. I think they're just atrocious, especially with this. I told you, their season was over the second Eric Berry went down. Their, their Super Bowl hopes were over in week one. I don't know. I didn't tell you that. I said that in general because, yeah, they beat the Patriots, but at what cost? And it seems like that's what happens. You give up your arm and your leg to beat the Patriots. And the Steelers seem to give up their arm and their leg just to lose close to the Patriots, which is a whole separate issue. But, okay. Um, let's see. Top pick in the draft right now. It looks I've like been it's going to be Cleveland. I've been thinking about this one a lot. I can't make heads or tails of it. Um, um, well, it's not going to be a coin toss, so you don't have to. Yeah. Uh, I think it could be, though, in terms of, is it Josh Rosen? Is it Saquon Barkley? Is it another name? I think it's going to be quarterback. I think almost a guarantee Dorsey is drafting a quarterback number one. So I think it's going to be Rosen or Mayfield. I if think Darnold still has a shot to go number one. God, no, I, I riot if he, if they go Darnold. I would be not about, so... See, what I do, I do some mock draft videos. Yeah, I, I mean, I, mock drafts. sometimes, you know. People get mad at me. For thinking that players will go places. Oh, look, Lamar Jackson's 10 times a player Sam Darnold is. I'm like, 
yeah, but that doesn't mean he's necessarily going to be drafted before him. Yeah, apparently, uh, reported by Benjamin Albright, he would be surprised, based on leaked sources, if Jackson goes in the top 20 right now. And yeah, that he might Walter not be. Football has the Giants taking Lamar Jackson at two. I'm like, well, All right. well, Walter Football is about the worst. Yeah. Source on draft Twitter. Period. Had Malik Jefferson in the fourth round. Whew. Texas linebacker Malik Jefferson. Yeah. AKA yeah. first round talent Malik Jefferson. Yeah. So he back does. to the, back to the Browns. Let's let's just do that real quick. Does. So you think it could be Darnold or Rosen? Do you think Mayfield? Or do you think that inspires too many flashbacks for that idiot Haslam? Hold on. I, I saw something in the chat that uh, uh, I'll hold on to it for a minute. Go ahead again. Ask again. Sorry. Who's going to be number one? Rosen, Darnold, or Mayfield? Because Rosen. Rosen? Yes. I wouldn't be happy with it, honestly. I, I think he's too slight. It's just... I think that guy's going to take too many hits, and he has too many injury issues already. I think you, I think you might be right. I just wouldn't be happy with it. Um, I would love Baker at number one. Okay, so what was that thing that you were holding on to? Quote, Bengals' number one cornerback prospect last year is trash, LOL. So I had a 1A and a 1B, all right? One yeah. of my ones was Marshawn Lattimore, okay? okay? So he's not trash. What was your 1B? The other one is Jalen Tease Tabor, who isn't trash, he hasn't played. I he thought Tabor's pretty good. He's done, he did very well in the preseason and then hasn't played. The Lions didn't want to play him yeah. for whatever reason. He was always a healthy scratch. They said, oh, he's put in very good practices. You can't say a player's trash when the team is not playing him. Aside from the fact that a lot of teams... And then he hasn't yeah. played. Yeah, and a lot of teams a do that. Start next year. A lot of teams do that with corner prospects. And he, uh, he's played some recently, and he hasn't yes. even played like trash. He's been pretty good. Yeah, I, I like so T. That's Tabor. a ridiculous statement. But Sidney Jones is my number two. I so. like Sidney Jones a lot. He dropped for me because of injury. Yeah, that, I, I had him as a second round more. grade. That's another fucking Eagles got him. Jeez. Hey, hey, hey! Language. My language. <laughs> we already used up our one for today. That's true. I said. I said BS. <laughs> or did you say something else? We might have used more than two. <laughs> I, I know I didn't. I've been very. Uh, yeah, we, we, we've done we've done terribly with this. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's see. Uh, two more questions. Let's see. Uh, who the hell will coach Cleveland next year? I'm sticking with Hugh Jackson, but he won't last for half the season. He's terrible. He's terrible. Um, let's see. And the last one is. Let's see. Who wins the NFC South? And I think if the Falcons decide to find a click, they win it all. Okay. Uh, we'll have two more questions. We'll have that, and then we'll talk about golf. So who, who do you have winning the NFC South? Saints. Saints? You know, if the Falcons win this week over them, they would be the front runner for the division. I have the Saints winning the division. Okay. And the last one, has Jared Goff proven that he is the number was deserving of being taken number one overall? No, Sean McVay has made him. Agreed. I think he has shown that he is a serviceable quarterback who doesn't have a huge ceiling to him, which is exactly what I said about him coming into the draft. I thought that Wentz was the guy with the higher ceiling and lower floor, that Goff would be a mid-20s to low-teens, or I guess high-teens being like 17 to 19 at best. To be fair to Jared Goff, he's made some very impressive throws this year. Yes, to be fair to him, but I mean, the one that comes to mind for me is a deep post. Um, I believe it might have been a, to Robert Woods, and I'll tell you, Cooper Cup is a fun player to watch. Yeah. Um, but I think it was a deep post to Robert Woods, and it, there's no safety help. All you have to do is throw it as far as you can, and you know, know how far you can throw, and then wait for that to happen. Yeah. So it's like it's not like you're you know fitting in a ball on a tight window. Perfect yeah. throw, right on the money. But, you know, there are a lot of quarterbacks that can make that throw, even though deep accuracy is a concern for some. Even Sean He's made Watson some good plays, it. but he doesn't have the ceiling that a number one overall pick should have. Yeah. Yeah. Carson Wentz in that offense would be something else. Yeah, it would be unreal, um, especially because run first was his M.O. at North Coast State. So. Yes. I, I always thought that he was a better fit for the Rams to begin with, even with Fisher. But, you know, what do I know? Nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> okay, so 
let's discuss the picks for this week. Uh, last week I went 12 and four. You were on a roll until you, we got to those uh, late games on. on yeah, Sunday. I was I was perfect all day Sunday, and then things were bad. Saturday also didn't go well. No, we, we were both awful on that. But Which I don't regret. I would do it again. I would. I, I would still too. make the same picks. Yeah, I would too. I mean, maybe I would pick Detroit, but mm, I'd still stick with the Chargers, even though they yeah. they get owned by the Chiefs apparently all the time. Um, there's no Thursday night game tonight. I'm sad, but I'm happy because I hate Thursday night football. Thursday night I think, sucks. I think the games are always lackluster. But we have a few games tomorrow, uh, Saturday, two games on Saturday, the rest on Sunday, and then one Monday night thriller between Nick Foles and Derek Carr, a.k.a. Nick Foles 2.0. Um, Colts, Ravens in Baltimore. I think Ravens. that's a, that's a pretty clear Playing for Ravens. their season. Playing for their season, they're eight and six, hosting Jacoby Brissett and company. Yeah. I don't. I think. Uh, I think if the Ravens win this game, they clinch playoffs. The I'm biggest reason I think the Ravens will beat the Colts, it's the Colts. <laughs> That's the biggest reason. That's the only reason. I thought it was Chuck Pagano one, Colts number two, three, yeah, and the Pagano, Colts roster. A like, great, not, great I person. Said something real controversial, and I'm not going to. But let's move on. He's a great person. Bad coach. Yeah. Let's leave it. Terrible coach. Um, Vikings at Packers. Brett Hundley back in the starting lineup. No, I'm, no I'm, to the Brett Hundley. Era. I'm, I'm going. I'm going Vikings. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, I had the Vikings coming in this season at twelve and four, and I think that they could end up going thirteen and three, which would be pretty cool. I had uh, the Giants at eleven and five. Next game, you got this. Uh, Bears Browns in Chicago. Do the Browns pull off another Christmas Eve miracle? Yes. I'm taking the Browns again. I'm, I'm taking the Browns this time. I, I'm i doing it. I will do it because I think Jordan Howard will get plugged up a little bit, and then it'll be up to Mitchell Trubisky, who has been hot and cold. I want to see the Browns win this game. This is the same Browns team that was up. Maybe it was two scores to the Ravens no, at one uh, point. Packers. No, no, Ravens as well. I'm not talking. They lost. They, they, they lost twenty-seven ten. Yeah, but they were up. I think it might have been ten nothing at one point. Um, I thought they never. I, I don't remember them ever winning. But I thought again, they had a lead. I'm almost positive. Uh, let me just double check that real quick. Well, well, keep talking. Uh, nope, they never had a lead. I don't know about that. I remember. Wait, wait, wait. They might have had a lead at one point, but they it started three nothing. Uh. Baltimore leading. Uh, yes, they had a seven to three lead, and then that was it. <laughs> I'll take it. So they led once. Yeah, well, that's that. That's an eight and six team. We're talking about the Chicago Bears with a rookie quarterback. Yeah, and and injuries and whatnot, and no wide receivers. Yeah, they have a bad team. They do. They have a bad team. God, I hate the, the Bears Browns. sometimes. Give me the I, Sean I, Kaiser. Yeah. Give me. Larry Ogajobi. Danny Shelton. Give me Miles Garrett. The one time I'm going to root against Mitchell Trubisky. Um, Go Browns. Bengals hosting the Lions. That's another game I won't be watching. Um, <laughs> I will take the Lions. I am going to... <sighs> I think what the mascot of the Cincinnati team is clearly better. Yes. Clearly. Uh, Yes. Clearly. Well, yeah, you are a Bengals fan. Um, I'm going to go Lions. <laughs> I'm going to go Lions. Yeah, go Lions. Uh, Rams at Titans. Ooh. The Titans are not good. <laughs> They're not the Rams good are better than, than the, they are. I, I'm thinking the Rams. I'm not even yeah. thinking twice about it. Chiefs hosting the Dolphins. This is actually an interesting one. I think I'm going to have to take the Chiefs at Arrowhead. Yeah. But... You know, I think the Dolphins might make it closer. It depends which smoking Jay we get. Yeah, well, it uh, it's I'm, I'm picking the Chiefs. <laughs> well, yeah, I am too. But like, also like smoking Jay against the New England Patriots. Prime time football comes out to play. They are favored That's by ten and a half. Team. The Chiefs are favored by ten and a half. Yeah, I'm taking the Chiefs. I'm just saying. Yeah, like, no, I'm, I'm I'm just saying that's that's crazy. I take the spread. Yeah, uh, Patriots hosting the Bills. 
yeah, I don't know if the Bills really have a chance. They might just say, hey, all right, Nathan Peterman, whatever your concussion protocol is, you're going in. You know, it's going to be really interesting. If they and the Chargers finish with the same record and the Chargers win because of the head-to-head tiebreaker because they decided to bench Tyrod Taylor for Nathan Peterman, uh, that would be that would be the most Bills thing to ever happen. It really would be. But I'm picking the Patriots as well. Of course. Falcons at Saints. Both dome teams. I'm picking the Falcons. I am. Be- I'm a believer. All right. Well, last time we had this this same predicament. You went with the Falcons. I went with the Saints. Falcons won. I'm not taking the Falcons. I'm taking the Saints. <laughs> of Alvin course Kamara, you are. He's the difference maker. He went out in the first quarter. The Saints would have won. Give me the Saints. Give me a healthy well, Alvin Kamara. Saints win. I mean, Alvin Kamara isn't the one who threw the game losing interception. They wouldn't have. Ne- it would have never been in that situation. They would have dumped. Matt it Ryan off is not throwing Kamara. three more it interceptions. It would have broken twenty tackles from eleven different players. It would have scored. Game over. Saints win. Alvin Kamara MVP. I I don't think Matt Ryan's throwing three more interceptions. Throwing that, against that Saints secondary, Ken Crawley. <laughs> just shut up. <laughs> Chargers at Jets. Kenny Vaccaro's out for the season, but you got Von Bell. Yeah, that dude played with a torn to the bone adductor and a wrist injury. Hook that dude horse. is unreal. I mean, yeah, he he, he was playing for his career. Bad ass. He 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 was playing for his career because he did struggle at times. But I think this new role, especially playing in the nickel, has helped him a lot. But I'd like to say that we're going to see a ton of Julio Jones lining up in that nickel spot, taking on the likes of um, of uh, Harris, uh, Devontae Harris and company, which I don't trust. I think we're going to see a lot more of Julio in the slot because he does have an affinity for that role anyway. Uh, Chargers, Jets. Chargers. I'm going San Diego Super Chargers. And yeah, season pretty much on the line yeah bryce petty i don't have faith in him against that chargers defense i'm sorry yeah i can't take a bear or bear yeah i mean except for josh gordon um yeah well can't forget about kendall right yeah we can um (laughs) everyone else has (laughs) yes uh redskins hosting the broncos uh broncos suck yeah i'm going redskins redskins Panthers Although, hosting last time, the Bucks. Last time I picked the Broncos against the Jets, people called me an idiot. Guess what happened? Shut them down and they shut did. them out. Okay. Them. We need to talk about Morton giving up in that game. He even admitted that he gave up and decided to run out the clock for the final, like, 10 minutes of the game. <laughs> that's like that's like Les Miles taking a knee in the third quarter LSU on, like, goal, on the goal line of uh, some game. Yeah, it that's, that's bad. But it's it's worse when you're losing. Hilarious. It was they were had like a forty point lead in the. Third. Yeah, but it's it's worse when you're losing to yeah, give up. Of but yeah. um, Panthers, Buccaneers, in, um, in Carolina. Yeah, the Bucks aren't good. Yeah, I'm picking Carolina. Jaguars at Jimmy Garoppolo's. This will in fact be Jimmy Jimmy Garoppolo's first loss. He will be pressured on sixty percent of his throws. That's a ridiculous statement. Um, he will be pressured more than he's faced in the last starts. There's I'd say he'll no be pressured by 48%. There is no way Jimmy Garoppolo wins this game. It's not even Jimmy Garoppolo. There's no way the 49ers win. There isn't a chance. Um, you don't want to, but you know you have to. You want your record to be pure. You can't pick the 49ers here. I picked I picked Rodgers because of my heart. I can't make that mistake again. I love Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm picking the Jaguars. Um, Jacksonville Seahawks Cowboys in Dallas. Ezekiel Elliott is back. Seahawks are are back, playing with a vengeance after a huge blowout loss to the Rams. And um, I think this is contingent on Bobby Wagner. By the way, did you see this Bobby Wagner Earl Thomas beef? Oh, yeah, it's terrible, man. But that was so bad. Yeah. I, I don't know if you knew the big Earl Thomas guy. Oh, yeah, I, I, I had no idea. I think he went to this school in Texas somewhere. He may have, yes. Uh, he, something with, like, hook them and, like, picture frames or horns or something. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. But if you guys didn't know about this story real quick, um, Earl Thomas, in an interview, 
said that he didn't think Bobby Wagner should have played on an injured hamstring, which maybe you shouldn't be talking about other players. Then Bobby Wagner goes out and tweets, E, keep my name out your mouth. Stop being jealous of other people's success. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you uh, keep falling, bro. Like, oh, shoot. Like, I mean, that's how you're going to handle it as a man on a, you know. Like, and he deleted it too. It's yeah, not like yeah, he stuck quickly, by it. Because he's like, that was dumb. Yeah. But I think that now there's certain beef there. Um, yeah. There has to be. So who are you picking? Uh, I don't. I don't like. I don't like this game. This is a game I'm not sure about. I, I'm picking Dallas. I'm picking Ezekiel Elliott to run through that defense. I think Wagner's still not healthy. I think KJ's not going to be healthy. Uh, no Chancellor. I think Dak and company are going to control time of possession in Dallas. You make a lot of good points. I'm going to take the Cowboys. Okay. Um, Giants at Drew Stanton and the Cardinals. This one worries me because. I don't want the Giants to win. I don't think they're going to. The way that the Cardinals beat the Jaguars and the Titans in their own building. They're a 6-8 terrible team, and they keep beating better teams. It doesn't make any sense. I'm picking the Cardinals. Uh, The Giants play the Eagles pretty close with a backup. In New York, in a divisional game. The Dolphins. Look what the Dolphins just did. I don't know. I'm going to take the Cardinals. I want the Cardinals to win. I know you're a shitty giant. You're a, you're a poopy giant. <laughs> um, I want the draft pick. The second pick is far more valuable than the third, especially considering who the giants are picking behind yeah. in the Cleveland Browns. They're this about to take Bradley Chubb. Second overall. They're about this to take Bradley Chubb. Pick. You know it, right? Lose, trade down. They're taking, they're taking a, a pass rusher. They need one, but, you know. They need one to replace Olivier Vernon. Um, What does that mean? (laughs) What does that mean? Steelers at Texans. Steelers. Steelers. And lastly, Oakland Raiders at Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, that's another game that's, like, pretty uh, – I'm going to take the Raiders – I'm taking the Eagles because Derek Carr and company aren't good. That's true. <laughs> and that's all there is to it. You're not wrong. I just, I just, sometimes you got to pick with your feeling. And my feeling is I, I, I hate took Eagles. Garoppolo <laughs> so much. And then I, you convinced me not to, because you said to not go with my heart. There's so much wrong with this. Yeah. The Eagles are bits better. So I'll go, I'll go Philadelphia. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, uh, I think that wraps Raiders things up. Now, now, now okay. they're going to win. So. Of course they will. Yeah. But um, this is going to be one of the least climactic weeks in football. Apparently only three teams have a 10% chance of adjusting their playoff uh, prospects this week. Only three teams. That's so, crazy. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, uh, it was something along those lines. But, no, it was, sorry, it was three matchups. Three matchups where the two teams had 10%. So, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, uh, you know. Either way, um, yes, all picks are final, Hardy. Um, Any other final notes, anything you want to talk about? Oh, yeah, quickly, XFL. Vincent Kennedy McMahon of WWE sold off 3.34 million shares of WWE. Or $100 million. Yes, to start investing towards a new potential football league do you think an expansion league as a development or develop developmental league will benefit the league and at what position specifically the xfl is just is going to be just as bad as it was in the 90s and i probably will love it just as much or as like you know highlights and whatnot and yeah. nicknames on the back of the jerseys and essentially no rules yes <laughs> while no kickers um I don't think it will be that successful. I was talking about this earlier. I, you know, it's going to make money probably considering, uh, you know, networking and things like that. I wonder what network's going to get the XFL. Well, NBC had it in 2000. They had, I don't think they're going to again, especially no. now with their current partnership with Sunday Night Football. And well, here's the, the thing. NBC and Vincent McMahon lost $35 million a piece in one season of the XFL in 2000. Then they folded or 2001, somewhere in there. So there's that. But I will say that ABC does not have a partnership outside of ESPN with the NFL. 
I think that would be the most logical source for it. And I think quarterback and offensive line play will be the two most that will benefit from an expansion league if it actually sticks around. It's yeah, it's going to be so bad. I mean, you'll see so you'll see guys develop there. I mean, that'll be the point. It'll be better than college football, but it'll be worse than pro football. What? Well, it's going to be the cream of the crop that doesn't make it. So it's like taking the Cleveland Browns and multiplying them by five. Oh, that's fair. I, I thought you meant like better. I didn't. I didn't think you meant better quality. I thought you meant better. Oh no, no, ridiculous. No, state. I think there's going to be better talent at on those teams. Yeah, that's that's fair. The product might not be as good, and it's going to be a small number of teams. I think it'll be the best teams. college players that aren't good. It'll it'll be the if you say the zero point zero one percent make it to the NFL, it'll be the zero point zero five to zero point zero two who are there. Yeah, which is still great. I mean, it'll be interesting to see because if we enjoy watching college football and seeing some of these terrible players who have no future playing, it'll be cool to see these guys who are trying to compete for a tryout at the NFL level. Telling you what I'm looking forward to. What? Let me get out my uh, my wristwatch here. It's Tebow time. Oh dear God! On that note, we're out. I hope you guys enjoyed the Cover 2 podcast, episode number five. I am Moonlight Swami, and that is Bangle, who is currently T-bowing, and I'm turning his camera off. <laughs> <laughs> and we will be talking to you guys next week. Peace. <laughs>